Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we're now moving away from, of course, uh, what happened today in history to talking about what happened just a couple of days ago. The Kano State local government elections, um, of course, uh, took place and there were pictures and videos of certain parts of the election that many people are not very proud of. Uh, we've invited, uh, once again, Libra Soshoma, who's still here with us, to share his thoughts on the allegations of underage voting in Kano State. Um, it's not the first time, you know, I think we would also quickly mention that it's not the first time that we're seeing images like this coming from states in northern Nigeria. Um, and, uh, of course, the controversy over whether this was um, an old picture, an old video also, we, we'll probably break, break that down for you during this conversation. Mm -hmm. Good morning once again, uh, Mr. Ashoma. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. All right. Um, so let's first of all, you know, start with the, the you know, conversations about whether these are old images, uh, these videos are, you know, maybe, you know, photoshopped, you know, um, they're, they're from the past and people are trying to run a smear campaign on the Kano State uh, uh, local government um, election. So let, let's start with your response to that. I bet you that that would be their response. Uh, but unfortunately, these videos, you have people complying with um, um, NCDC protocol, some wearing face masks. And so um, if they were old videos, you won't have... Um, people wearing face masks. Um, if there were elections in uh, those states, uh, then you won't have them, um, you know, those children, some of them even, you know, you see them, you know, that these are, are um, purely not on children. And then also, coupled with the fact that this is not the first time, in 2015, there were lots, loads and loads of videos and pictures. Even in 2011, there were pictures of underage registration and voting. So it is not the first time um, this thing is happening in the northern part of Nigeria. Just the same way there's been allegation of um, uh, PVC buying in the south and, you know, uh, politicians using touts, you know, who uh, did not even register. PVCs are bought and handed over to them to go and vote in certain centers or hijacking of ballot boxes or destruction of ballot boxes. If you also raise that here, now somebody will come and say, no, it didn't happen now, or these are just smear campaigns. We need, that's why, you know, a lot of people still do not have hope in our electoral process. And it is worse off with the local government election. Every state, every state, no exception, every state that conducts local government election, the party, you know, in charge, at that state, usually sweeps the polls. Um, in some cases, I really do not, for me, I wonder why they even still bother to conduct elections because recently, um, Abia State conduct, conducted local government election and <laughs> almost all the other parties were kicking. And I told them, I said, look, you don't, don't even bother because the election is a selection process. At the end of the day, they will just sit down somewhere and write results. Unfortunately, here, what you're seeing now in Kano is the fact that they've taken it a notch further. They even allow children to, to register. If you read the reports, some persons, even on Twitter, they say, look, this didn't happen. In 2015, as um, a youth call member, during registration, I refused to register some of this And on my that life age. was threatened. Yes, my life was threatened. That. And they told me, look, if you do not, then you won't live here alive. In some cases, the defense in, in the 2015 election was that some of them, their parents came and said, yes, they are not underage, they are 18 and above. And, you know, so you see a child, you know that this is a child, but the parents are saying, no, he's 18 and above. And then you are, you are browbeated by the people. Because, and first and foremost, we do not have accurate figures of how many we are as a country. We keep estimating from uh, 150 we estimated to 160 from 160 we've estimated to 200. 200 from 200 now if some are projecting 220 and you know fluctuating between 220 and 250 so we do not and that's why when you look at if you remember in 2010 when jega was appointed jega did say that he was going to automate the registration process because before now you had names like Bing clinton you know, Barack Obama and um, all sorts in our electoral register. Jega said, no, we're going to clean up the electoral register and 
when they, they started another round of registration, what they did, because also what we do, we are very good at doing is multiple registration. One person will register in 10 polling units. And so what they did was to run what they call automated fingerprint identification system on the register. So after the register, they take these things to, to run them through an automated fingerprint identification system. What that did for them was, first and foremost, you, you, you tally the biometrics with you know, the facials and the names. And so in cases where they had multiple registration, you saw numbers of regis registered voters dropping in some state. If you remember, governors started complaining that no, you can't from, uh, we had uh, 5 million registered voters. You can't reduce it to 2 million because, uh, but yet the proof on ground is the fact that what we have is about 3 million uh, multiple registration. In some cases, 1 million underage registration. Yet, the, the governor's complaint, at, at some point, INEC beats a retreat. M Mr. Oshoma, let's, let's uh, come back to this issue. No, I'm giving you, wait, I'm yes, giving you a, 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 yes. a history of that it, is, it didn't just start today. The children who are voting today did not just walk to the polling unit to vote without registration. Because that's where the process starts from. So there was a process where they were registered and card issued to them. And if you remember, even in the last election, they were complained that why people in the South were asked to go queue for their PVCs. The PVCs were handed over to emirs and kings and some political stakeholders in, in the North to distribute to the um, uh, owners. You know, that also was... A, a, a debatable issue whether it happened or it didn't happen and because INEC the uh, state election states uh, would always require INEC register to conduct local government election so once you have registered during INEC registration you can vote at the local government uh, election and then if you look at the statistics every state including Lagos state you have the number the total number of voters in those states, no matter the turnout of voters, it's usually not more than 35% of actual voters. We say, oh, there was massive turnout of voters, but when you just oppose the actual number of voters registered with voters. the num number of registered voters, you find out that the figures are over bloated. And that's why I keep quarreling with, you know, the, our population as a country. That's where we need to start from, a situation where governors are desperate to inflate electoral register. They will be desperate so even use Pam Kane, we're talking about people now. There are cases where there were allegations that Pam Kane's were used as thumbprint, as fingerprints to vote in certain areas. Also, you remember in the 2015 election, in, in, was it 2015 or 2011 election in Oshu State, that APC had to bring in a, a forensic expert to analyze the ballot papers and the fingerprint therein. You know, so when you look at all the problems and where we are coming from, you just say, well, we saw this coming. The INEC knew that this was going to happen. The state electoral uh, body knew that it was going to happen. Even stakeholders in the state knew that it was going to happen. And so it's for the rest of us in the media to begin to debate, was it or was it not? Because all of the trappings, all of the, the, the um, fingerprints that this would happen were already there. All right, Mr. Oshoma, this, this video we've seen, if we can all agree that they wore face masks and it was a recent video, what happened in Kano State, if we can all agree on that fact, and we can all agree as well that underage voting is against the laws of Nigeria's constitution, who then will be prosecuted for this? Nobody. Nobody would be. But a lot of people should have been prosecuted. Um, you start with, you know, um, INEC that allowed underage voters. But the ad hoc staffs would say that they were compelled to. And when you were compelled to, and then you get back to the office, what did you do? You left, you allowed the names there. You were, your officers on the feed. I remember in... Um, in Akwaibom during the 2019 uh, election, I was at the tribunal there, and you know what happened was uh, narrated that on the feed, certain persons heard the uh, INEC officers to ransom, 
and insisted that you know they must write results. But when they got to the office, the electoral um, um, umpire, the rec in that state, Mike Guinea, insisted that they should write report of what happened. They wrote report and cancelled those those um, results. results that they were compelled to write. As I speak to you now, a professor, a professor from a Nigerian university, is standing trial for uh, uh, um, the complications in a quiet bomb election. And so during this uh, uh, registration, after that registration where you were head down, you were com compelled to do all of those, when you got back to the office, what did you do? You allowed the, the process to go. The secondly, it is high time our, 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 our tribunals can't do anything about it because to prove underage voting, you will need not just the ballot or the registration because at the registration, the age will be falsified. So when you bring the ballot and then you see the name or the register, you see the name, uh, Mamadou Shaka, you see age, uh, date of birth, you see it there. How do you determine on the face of this, that document that this is an underage voter? How about the, the, fo the photo of the, of the and, voter? And so that's why I say what they should have done. I thought that's why I, I, I narrated, you know, the fingerprint, automated fingerprint identification system. So what it does in some cases, when you marry the fingerprint with those photos, that's, that should be at the back end immediately after registration, not even during voting process. The moment you issue a card to the person, it is presumed that you have accepted that age that the person stated to be his actual age. So the prosecution should start from my neck, and then the stakeholders in the process, a situation where such elections are not allowed to stand. Such elections, we've seen, we've seen, but I am also not one that would, you know, always want courts to interfere in our process. Let the electoral umpires be empowered enough, independently, to say, look, these elections did not meet the test required of you know such right. election and so for that we've cancelled elections in this place even if it's the numbers that are going to determine this uh, 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 the winner would be less than what we expect so be it so that it will serve as a deterrent to people who are so desperate and then this that's why a lot of people are talking about immunity clause removal of immunity clause a situation where the governor this there is no fraud Electoral fraud that can stand if the governor does not have a hand in it, especially at the local government level. So they sit down, they cook uh, 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 figures, they cook up figures, where they, they are not cooking figures like they do in the south, on the age of voting like they do in the north. Oh, and at the end of the day, they will tell you, oh, this is the beauty of democracy. The, the people have spoken. <laughs> um, so first of all, you know, you're talking about INEC taking responsibility. I saw... Um, a response on uh, Twitter yesterday by INEC and their official Twitter handle, um, you know, basically saying that it wasn't INEC's responsibility. It, it is. is a state, um, um, you know, independent electoral commission that should be held responsible no. for local government election. That that was what they tweeted yesterday. Or whoever whoever is their you know Twitter handler, that is what you know the person's response was when those uh, pictures and videos were put out. But I want you to quickly speak a little bit more on um, the credibility of our census figures and why that will continue to be a challenge for us with regards to elections. If we're not going to be taking you know, these things seriously, it's either there's ballot box, uh, box snatching in one part or there is underage voting in, in another part. It feels like the laws are different in different parts of the country. And the laws that hold you know, uh, people you know, to ransom and, of course, uh, put people in check in the South and stop underage people from voting doesn't hold them in, in the North. Um, and so let's talk about the census figures now. How much of a problem will this continue to cause if we don't get it right? Yeah, first and foremost, um, like I said, the responsibility is squarely on INEC because the register that the state electoral body is using is obtained from INEC. The cards that they are using to vote are not cards belonging to the state electoral body. It belongs to INEC. They were issued by INEC. And so the presumption is that the moment you issue a card, to a child of one year, you have certified that that child is of age to vote. That's one. So because the question would be, I have a card, why will you deny me from yes. exercising my franchise? When INEC, the National Electoral Body has certified me, you know, to eligible be to vote. Uh, uh, eligible to vote. That's on one side. Then on the issue of um, registration, 
when um, uh, Festus Odumegu, the former uh, Nigerian Bureau's MD, was appointed to man National Population Commission, what cost him that job? Because he said he was going to conduct a credible census, that he was going to use satellites to conduct credible census, satellite images. Because you can't say you have 200 people in this community, and then, but the satellite is showing that you have 50 people here. And so, immediately, you know, Edas in the North called for his head. They, we should stop deceiving ourselves. We should stop trying to behave as if, look, everybody in Nigeria behaves as one. We have a peculiar behavior, depending on the region. In the South here, they snatch ballot boxes, they sell voters' cards. In some cases, people without regist registered vo uh, uh, cards are allowed to vote. In the North, it is underage. So we should not shy away from the fact that, um, oh, look, don't talk about it like that. So you are crossing segregation. No. What is obtainable there, we should discuss it. What is obtainable here, we should discuss it. The only way we can break away for this, from this, it's not these multiple data that we are collating every day. Today you collect name. Tomorrow you collect uh, BVN. Next tomorrow you talk about uh, 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 SIM card registration. And then uh, another one, passport. All of them, you are collating data and biometrics until we sit down and use technology really appropriately to capture the numbers we are in Nigeria with accurate age. If you go to, if you're going to do a master's program in some of these countries now, the moment you, you issue the visa and you get there, as you're arriving, the, once you enter your, you complete your registration, the next thing you will get is a letter from the Population Commission telling you the number you are in that community. You have completed your registration in the university. So they don't need you to go and do NIM again and go and do... The moment you do all of those registration in the university, they've taken all the data they need to take. They send it to the appropriate bodies who will now do you a letter telling you you are number 252,000 in this community. You are welcome. These are your rights, these are your privileges, and these are your responsibilities. Yes. Until we even attempt to do that, where we know the numbers we are, you will still have this issue of multiple term printing, underage voting, uh, ballot box snatching. That's why you will have a situation where you will have technology, but we will rather jettison technology and still resort to manual in our election or in uh, anything that we do. What are the benefits? One, if you have a state, a state says we are 10 million, for example, and but registered voters in the state, the state says it's 5 million. But from the census figure, you say no, this state, the actual figure in this state is 6.5 million from this, the images that we have, you know, via satellite, and then you try to give or take, you try to marry them and tally them. What are the numbers of the other age? You don't need all these bogus INEC, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, BVN and the rest, to actually know the figures. Once you cross, you, know, you already know the numbers so it's of simple people. simple mathematics then. The numbers of children that, are give, that, are, that were uh, given birth to in the year 2020. And so, as people are dying, there's death registration. So you know the numbers that we clock 18 when they clock 18. You know those that are traveling, you know, out of that environment because some have gone to school in other places. So once you clock 18, they run a check and send you a letter that you are 18 today and then you are eligible to vote. These are your... So you don't need people... At some point, you, you troop all of them out. Yes, we are doing registration for right. voters and the rest. And, right. you know, so when you have all of these figures, it becomes difficult for you know, a governor to want to manipulate because you have an independent body that is distinct from the control of the governor or the president doing all of this. All right, Mr. Libor Sushoma. Um, 
Thank you very much for your thoughts. Uh, just like Osaregi mentioned earlier, you know, INEC released a response there saying that they've basically passed the buck to the state government. But we did try to reach out to the state government. We called uh, the special advisor to the uh, Governor Gandaji, uh, Salisu Yakasai, so many times, sent messages, but we're yet to get a response from, from them. We do hope that they can respond to this. Let's see what they, what they have to say <clears throat> and how they're, how they're going to react to these allegations of underage voting in Kano State. But uh, until, until we do, uh, it's, uh, it's a wrap on this conversation here on the Kano State allegations of uh, underage voting. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee Shama, for your time in our Pleasure. studio. Always. All right. All right, stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into talking um, about the possibility of school resumption. The House of Reps are saying that Nigerian kids need another three months at home until we're sure where we are with regards to COVID-19. We'll talk about that after this break.